Welcome to Data Structures with Professor Caleb. Today I'd like to talk about dynamic arrays in Java, or how do I implement my own version of ArrayList? So arrays have problems. The basic problem is that they're fixed size. We can pick that size at runtime, but once we've chosen it, the size can't just be changed. So we run the risk of running out of room. What we want is an array that can grow. The basic idea, what we wanna look at today, is I have a list of items. I want it to be accessible by index efficiently, to be able to grab the thing in constant time, as long as I have the index where it is. And then we also do want our list to be able to grow arbitrarily long. What information are we gonna to need to do that? First, we're going to need the array to store the data in. Then we're going to need the capacity of the array. Now that we already have in Java, we have the array. We also know how long it is. So that's easy. Then we also want to keep track of the number of items that we currently have stored in the array. Most operations are going to be exactly the same as they're going to be in dealing with an array itself. Accessing items, we're just gonna say, here's the index, give me the item, and we'll look in the actual array, grab the index and provide it. Removing items, what we usually do when we have a list stored in an array is we just grab the last one and reduce the total number. Or if we're doing something from somewhere inside it, we'll take the one out of the middle and shove things over. So we want the same kind of behavior there. Adding items will also be the same, except when the array is full. When the array is full, then instead of just failing to add the item as we would with the regular array, we want to figure out how we're going to actually make the array grow. So growing the list. This is gonna be done when the array is full. So our number of items equals the capacity of the array. What we're going to do then is we're going to create a new array, typically one that is double the capacity of the old array. So whatever the size of the array we currently have that's full, we're going to make a new one twice as big. Then we're going to copy all of the elements from the old array into the new array. Once we've done that, we're going to change our array instance variable value, assuming we're doing this in a class because Java, we're doing it in a class so that it points at the new array. It's one of the beauties of object reference variables is I can just say, okay, quit pointing at that array and point at this one instead. And then we can proceed with adding the new element to our list, just as we would if our array hadn't been full. Why double? We have two things that we're concerned about. First, we don't really want to waste a lot of space. So we don't wanna have too much extra space. At the same time, we don't want to copy too frequently. Those things are kind of opposite each other. The double means that we at least have limited the total amount of space. So if we actually use n items at one point, so our maximum size we needed was n, then we're going to have n minus one extra spots at most. That's not great, but it's not terrible either. What this also does is it guarantees that we don't actually copy anything too frequently. So if we think in terms of that maximum size then, if that was at the last point, then we copied in minus one, but we'll just say in things. The time before that, we would have copied in divided by two things. And before that, in divided by four, in divided by eight, in divided by 16. And as we look at that, we can see that we're not going to copy as many as two times n things. So that means we're gonna copy each item on average twice. That's not that bad. It's not perfect, but we have to give up something to get our dynamic array. So that's not bad. So I wanted to show you what this would actually look like. This is a very simple version. 
doesn't have many bells and whistles, but it shows the basic functionality, assuming at this point that we're just adding to the end of our list and removing from the end of our list. So we're not dealing with making changes anywhere else. We have public class my array list and the array itself. Got to have some place to store all of our data and the number of items, the number of things that we're actually storing in the list. The array will start, I've used 10 as a default starting size. That's not unusual. Use a different one if it was appropriate. Um, you could also set up a second constructor that um, took in the starting size for your list, which can be really useful for cases where maybe in this program, you know what a likely minimum size for your list to be would be appropriate. But we're going to set num items to zero in either case. Add item. So when we want to add an item, we first need to check is the number of items equal to the current capacity, which of course is stored in the array.link. If that's the case, then we're going to have to grow the array. And of course, we've created a private helper method to go do that growing. The array at num items is num. So that's simply putting that value in at the end of the list. And of course, we need to increase the number of items we have. Removing items in this case, since we're only dealing at the end, we're just going to reduce our number of items by one and then we'll ignore the existence of that last item. Now, of course, we might first zero out the element if security of the data is a concern. Get item, we're just gonna go access that item in the array. Growing the array is the piece that's interesting. So we're going to set up this temporary array, which is actually going to become our new permanent array. So we set it up to be the array dot length times two elements, doubling that length. Then we're going to go through till num items, only want to copy the items that are actually in the array, and then copy from the old array into that new array, temper. And then because these are object reference variables, we can simply say the array is assigned temp error. And now the array, our instance variable, is referencing that new value. And that is really all there is to the basic concept of how we manage one of these dynamic arrays in Java. Thanks for watching. See you next time.